Hey, I have a lot of videos on the calendar for this channel planned. There's a lot of things in the mail that are taking a lot longer than usual, you know, because 2020 is awesome. Let me tell you something. I did get like six hours of good, healthy sleep last night. I'm using a different camera and lighting this video a little bit differently. And that means that I do not have giant bags under my eyes. This should come as good news for those viewers of mine who graciously participate in the public service of telling me that I look like shit and that they're worried about me. I was really looking forward to telling you that you could take the day off, but then a bunch of mosquitoes had an orgy on my face. Now, initially I thought that this one was West Nile virus, but then I scratched it and it looks more like chicken gunya now. This is definitely malaria. Over here we got what looks like St. Louis encephalitis. So this is the final countdown. My time on this planet is now very limited with these diseases. And luckily I wrote down my list of things I wanted to do before I died on the back of this uh, Sweetwater <laughs> promo card thing. And uh, number one is feed a Cheddar Bay biscuit to a duck. Okay, that's easy enough. Number two, cover Melda's plugins on your YouTube channel. Oh, that one's gonna be rough. Okay, so seriously guys, this video is not gonna be all that cinematic, great looking, hyper edited, anything like that, because there's no way that it possibly can be because Melda's plugins are the ultimate rabbit hole. If you are a musician who uses computers or digital audio workstations and you've never heard of Melda Productions, then fuck you. No, just kidding. Then that's actually not that huge of a surprise because for some reason they're just kind of underrated and under the radar. However, most of the people that I would consider like like super producers or people who are highly skilled on the technical side of production, they're all using Melda. So I feel like Melda not having the same amount of attention as something like Ableton or Rolly Blocks or even Serum, a lot of producers actually see it as their secret weapon. So on the upside for somebody like me, a producer, and the downside for somebody like Melda, a company that's trying to make money off of software, they have so many products that it's actually quite dizzying for a consumer. And most of those products go so deep and they get so technical, which is amazing, but it also creates a pretty high learning curve. And that naturally creates a bit of a marketing puzzle or a marketing challenge. However, when you compare something like the M Complete Bundle, which is everything they make, up to something like the Waves Bundle, it's not only a lot cheaper, it's a million times more powerful. If you were equipped with the DAW of your choice and Melda's M Complete Bundle, and that was all you had, you would pretty much be able to make any type of music that you wanted to. I would say the only thing you would really be lacking in is something like really high-end realistic sounding orchestral sample libraries however on the percussion side they have m drummer which sounds really good like i mentioned before melda has a lot of plugins their library is extremely vast and out of that vast library i'm only going to be covering two products the first is m turbo reverb and the reason i'm covering that is because it easily gets my endorsement as the best reverb vst if you're really into or like playing with reverb and if you've never heard of m turbo reverb then your whole life is about to change because you have a plugin that has an insane amount of algorithms and within those algorithms it has an insane amount of presets and then mind-bogglingly you can press edit and then you can edit or create your own reverb algorithm in a vast GUI. And then the next thing I'll be covering is M Sound Factory, which is sort of the same idea, but for physical modeling and synthesis. And yeah, that is mind bogglingly powerful as well. I already recorded the PC sessions going over these two products yesterday and they run pretty long. And the crazy part is that I just barely scratched the surface. I didn't cover much at all. The reality is, is that if I were to learn and cover every facet of every single one of Melda's products, I could just create my own YouTube channel for only that, and I would probably go for 10 years without ever running out of content. This is just my really polite and long-winded way of saying, we're going deep into the weeds here. Shit's about to get real. We're going to get technical. Welcome to the jungle. All right, Ben, show them what's up. Melda M Turbo Reverb. There's a multiband version and then there's a normal version. I'm gonna load the normal version and you'll see why I'm keeping things simple. All right, so a little bit on how the structure of this works. You have your presets and so let's just choose room and then uh, this little electric piano sound through that. And then we have different variations inside that preset of room. So we have a medium room, large, deep, wide, punchy, 
sparse, muffled, complex, dense. So those are different variations of that particular algorithm. And then we could just move over to a booth algorithm and then that will sound. So this is a wine cellar algorithm. That's Syrah. Hmm. Merlot should be like brighter than Syrah, shouldn't it? And then Cabernet should be a little bit warmer and darker than Merlot. I feel like they got Pinot correctly. Riesling should be super sharp. Hmm. This is character room, and this is one that I actually use subtly quite often. Like, just very subtly. Not bad. All right, so now we move on to... All right, so let's move on to large spaces. And keep in mind that this is still algorithmic reverb. This is an impulses. Let's just go into a warm hall. Intimate. Deep. Bright and tight. I really, really like the character hall. All right, let's go into the huge category and we'll start with earth and yeah these just sound amazing jupiter is going to be larger than earth of course Planets aren't big enough for you. All right, let's go to galaxies and choose, oh, I don't know, Andromeda. Sounds pretty incredible. And I think that my argument for why I like these so much is very similar to the argument that you would hear when I review a reverb pedal. And it's that I can't really tell what's going on in the algorithm. Um, I can't hear the comb filters and the delays and things like that. But if I choose uh, the pinwheel variation of that algorithm, they actually change that up and it starts to get more interesting and I guess more transparent as well. Yeah, like in that one, you can actually hear the delays and comb filters. Damn it, I forgot that these are VST3 and therefore resizable. That would have made things look a little nicer. Anyway, so this reverb plugin sounds very, very good among the best, but there is a giant rabbit that I'm going to be pulling out of the hat in a few minutes. But related to that giant rabbit that I'm going to be pulling out of the hat is algorithms like this. This is outdoor, and I actually have different choices in my variation of the algorithm. So I can have a different early reflection type. Good 100% wetness, and then a different late reflection type. So... So you can really, really customize this to your liking. A funny little nag that I have of M Turbo Reverb is that their plates sound very, very accurate to what a real plate sounds like. But I don't really like what a real plate sounds like. So I actually don't use the plates in this plugin very often. I, I actually like the Vahawa plates. I don't do vocals very often. And that's probably why I don't see as much value in plate reverb but if you want real emulations of plates and don't feel like dealing with convolution reverb or impulses i have not heard anything better than this particular plugin all right so now we're in the creative genre that's ethereal they do have some modal sounding things like this is a metallic pluck we could actually change the algorithm like everything else. I like that spacious one. That just sounds so bizarre. 
This one's called Glass Resonator. Oddly enough, this sounds a lot like the poorly designed microphone stand that I hope to replace this week. Um, let's just bang on my table here. Got little springs up here. It's just such a great engineering idea for a mic stand compared to. This one's called Undead Factory, and the reason I like it so much is because it's probably the closest that I've come to getting that anti-shimmer from the Specular Tempest back there. Go an octave up here. Yeah, that just sounds absolutely beautiful to me, even though it's uh, supposed to be a zombie-related algorithm. And then I guess if creative wasn't creative enough for you, we even have special, which is like an extension of creative. We have spectral reverb. We have shimmer. A lot of different versions of it. Sounds great. And then we have 2D positioning algorithms, which I don't even want to open that can of worms here because in something like sound design, it's very convenient to work with in something like music. You can get really, really deep, and it's just the way, yeah, let's not even go there today. But it's okay that we're not going to go deep into that today because we're going to go somewhere even better as I pull this giant rabbit out of the hat. Ready? Here it comes. i got its ears. I'm going to load up this general hall algorithm. That sounds just fine. And I'm going to click edit up here, this little button, and poof. Check this out. We now can edit the algorithm so we can enable and disable and invert and modify by hand we can hand sculpt all of these early reflections and we could have up to four and then we could do the exact same thing with late reflections and we could go up to six and then we have dynamics eq and then a mid-side eq at the end and then we have general tools like generating an impulse Okay, and then after generating an impulse, we can then look at the analysis of that impulse. And we can look at the left or right, mid or side. I don't remember what video it was, but I remember saying in some video that Mel the plugins just keep going. They just never end in the amount that you can edit something. And on one hand, it is just incredible and it's the most powerful thing that you could possibly imagine getting your hands on and on the other hand it's just like overwhelming you're just like oh my god it's only reverb man m turbo reverb does not fall short on those expectations we can open up these perimeters we could open up these meters and utilities and they do make it a little bit easier for example we could have like the long reflections and they have presets that we could use within those, like creative, delayed, build up, old school, short effects. So this video probably is going to have a really ridiculously long runtime as it is. And you can imagine how long this video would be if I were to actually start from the ground up and make a reverb algorithm. It, that takes days in some cases. And so let's just enable only one early reflection. And this is actually something that can help you learn how to make a reverb algorithm. So let's just put it to Canyon. Hear that? Or let's just click the impulse, that's way better. And it's funny, because even with only one of these enabled, it sounds comparable to a lot of like reverbs that you would hear on hardware and even on some plugins. Um, you could hit randomize though. And even if you know what you're doing, hitting randomize a lot and just seeing how things sound and then modifying from there is actually a great way to make an algorithm because you can't really grasp everything that's going on in your brain. At least I can't. So we could have a long length and that'll sound very delay-like or we could have a very short length like that and then a longer decay. And let's move the complexity way up. All right, so we've created sort of a modal sound by turning the length all the way down to 1.4 milliseconds.
It almost sounds chimey. And so we could actually modulate the pitch of the signal that is being reverberated. And I'm actually showing this to you with this turned all the way down so you know what is being modulated. And so if we mix it, it actually sounds pretty gorgeous. And then in each one of these reflections, we have high pass and low pass filters. And while I'm not going to completely go down this rabbit hole right now, to make things even easier for you to understand how to emulate a reverberated sound with an algorithm, you can analyze an impulse response, which is incredibly helpful. And you have a lot of options on how you can analyze that. And that basically means that you could bring in impulses that you could download off the internet of different churches and stuff and look at them and say, okay, I want to change this part to not be as reflective, or I want to change this part to be a little bit warmer or not at, not have that delay when it hits the back wall. All right, you want to get stupid? Let's make a reverb algorithm only using one late reflection. And here's our sound as of right now. We don't have any reverb because none of these are enabled and there's nothing down here in the designer. All right, so this is coding. Some audio developers may be familiar with the syntax, but it is kind of its own little language. But it's not that complicated. Uh, P stands for parallel, A stands for all pass, D stands for delay. Um, we could do things like swap channels. I'm obviously not using any semicolons or anything like that because I'm just showing you this. There is a weird bug that kind of drives me nuts. Um, I can only backspace when I open up this little keyboard. So the people of Melda should should maybe know that. All right, so pad swap. I'm, I'm going to try and hash one out real fast here. All right, so parallel, all pass, delay, all pass, and we have this. Uh, generate an impulse. We could actually look at the analysis of that. But that does sound like, how do I put it? Shit. So... Let's swap the channel so it sounds a little bit more stereo. Let's put it through a high pass filter. Um, all right, so we swapped the channels. We have a few high pass filters, a few more all pass filters, and it actually sounds a little bit better now. Still very rugged though. Let's listen to that impulse. This is still pretty basic. I'm gonna try and make things a little bit more creative. All right, okay, let's hear it now. I kind of want to smooth out that delay. But it definitely sounds like a better reverb now. Let's keep going. All right, we're getting a little bit closer now. Let me just turn the dryness up here. So now we could actually make it more or less complex depending on how many resources we want to use. Um, that's pretty basic and then that's pretty much more complex obviously. Uh, the length just sort of stretches things out and size will actually mess with the pitch a little bit too but only in real time. So the size can... Uh, for example, if I just play something. But I do like my size pretty high, and I don't want really any pre-delay. Uh, I think we're good to like listen to the whole thing now. <laughs> Give it a try. Oh, I do want a little bit of modulation in there. Now I'm putting a little modulation in here. I might not use modulation on something like a guitar or a violin or vocals, something that actually has pitch modulation in it, but... An electric piano doesn't unless I actually move the thing. So let's just add a little bit in there to add a little bit more character to the final. Because when you modulate something behind reverb, that, that really just brings out the beauty in the whole thing. All right, let's just do one and hear it.
All right. Now, while I think that Melda's products, biggest downside is their massive learning curve and maybe their GUI is just not the prettiest, but they are aware that the learning curve is insane on something like a reverb algorithm. And they've actually done something that is, I've never heard anybody mention it, and it's just here and it's incredible. And it's called a smart seed generator. And so we can listen to this and it actually uses a sort of basic version of AI to help your algorithm out. So like, let's hear this. So what's the problem? We have too much fluttering, right? That's one of our biggest issues. We have too much fluttering. Uh, and this is basically just asking me, what do you want to get rid of, man? Like, all right, I have too much fluttering, too much echo density fluttering. And now what it's going, and I'm just going to like move all the thresholds just so we could see a bigger difference. And now I'm just going to do this. Boop. And it's just going to test algorithms. So what this is essentially doing is that it's taking your recommendations for what you want to minimize, and then it's creating random seeds, and then it's testing them and looking at the impulse. And I haven't found anything yet, and that's because I said something very specific. But if I just search for something very simple, like I just want a reverb that doesn't have quite as much length and maybe doesn't have as much resonance, it, you would have a lot more results by now. But this is going to take probably a really long time to actually find a suitable candidate. But what's amazing is that when it does find that suitable candidate, it actually works, which is just... And so another fascinating thing is that if we bring all those thresholds to 100%, and then if we just start bringing down the ones that are the most important to us, we could see in real time that it'll balance out our pickiness, essentially. And it'll give us things that might not be perfect, but might not be that bad either. And so, like, let's move that fluttering threshold really low, and let's move that echo density fluttering threshold really low, and let's just make a point that these are two things that are really important to us. And then we just select an algorithm and we have like that's on the right track but i still think we could do a lot better and we could bring this down to less than 100 which would be nice uh yeah i would like less echo density Ooh, that one's that's the big one right okay okay so we sound a bit better uh let me Turn my delay focus down maybe negative 60, and then my output order should probably be up four sets rather than just random. And that's not a bad sounding reverb at all for an algorithm that's literally, I'm like, I want to point to my screen, but that wouldn't actually work with it. For an algorithm that's literally this short and only using one out of 10 of these. So that's not using any resources, barely at all. And so just for something that goes on top of a, you know, a snare drum or a tom or something like that in the background, that you could do a lot worse. So for anybody who's not like a professional reverb algorithm designer, and even for somebody who is, the Smart Seed Generator is such an invaluable tool, and it's such a creative tool. And they, you could tell that they put so much work into it. But how do you market that? And if we just want to destroy all of our work, we could randomize the algorithm and randomize all of the perimeters. You could get some really chaotic sounds from doing this. Yeah, if you're a sound designer, and even if you don't care about reverb, this plugin will probably do you a lot of favors because even just randomizing reverb algorithms and keep in mind this is one out of 10 different things that i could randomize just randomizing one of these can create crazy sounds that you're not going to find anywhere else except for maybe except for maybe m sound factory which i guess we'll get into now okay so let's take a shallow dive into m sound factory M Sound Factory, from my understanding, is Melda's ultimate do-everything instrument. And usually when a company is announcing a do-everything instrument, I'm like, yeah, about time, make things more powerful, wrap everything up into one. But with Melda, you know it's just going to be completely insane. When I was first introduced to this, when it was in beta or alpha, something like that, I 
really was drawn to it because it had really good physical modeling capabilities. Now, of course, the M Sound Factory can make pretty much every type of synthesis under the sun, but physical modeling is more like if you want to make a bell sound or a string sound or a tire screeching sound. And this is something that I usually would go into pure data for. And so to have that inside a GUI, inside a DAW, is really exciting. And so let's open this up on its own. I, I just want to start new because it is a little crazy. And the initial interface that you run into here, let's blow this up, is actually quite underwhelming. And it's because, let's say, I just want to click keyboards here. Oh, look, I have the choice of six presets. Okay, I'll just click electric piano. And here's my electric piano. Wow, isn't that the most powerful thing you've ever heard? Well, if you click the presets here, now this same thing turns into... We could keep going. I could click this over here. This is an FM electric piano. And now we have all these presets. Now, if you've watched the first 12 hours of this video and saw how the reverb worked, you realize that it had a bunch of different algorithms. And then within those algorithms, it had presets. So it almost felt like you had a hundred different reverb plugins and then a bunch of presets for those plugins and all kind of nicely packed into one box. It's the exact same idea here where on this side you have instruments and on this side you have presets for those instruments and it gets really really deep as you would expect so let's dive into one of these all right so here's an instrument called lost in space it's a pad see how different it is in these presets within this one instrument it pretty much operates as if it's its own instrument and I'll show you why. Minimal template. Okay, so this has barely anything. It says no generators. So this is our generators for every instrument. This is our globals. This is like our poly and our ADSR and our uh, glide, things like that. And then this is our effects. However, within generator, we can insert effects modules, I believe, um, unless this has changed since the last time I played with it. And I'm just going to, let's have a look at the oscillator or sound generator sources that I could use. Uh, so we, right off the bat, we have an additive, a drum sampler, drum scratcher, um, drum synthesizer, FM oscillator, that, that's just like an analog oscillator, string, which is like car plus strong modeling, the wavetables, 256 wavetables, or you could do 40 or 8, um, these are all our filters, everything from Model to your normal low pass to resonator. Building blocks, these are random things. Some of these things you may actually recognize from the reverb algorithms, um, like, you know, left, right to mid side, things like that. Uh, modular, I believe that's where we can add in effects if we want to organize things a bit better. Uh, it's not exactly like the kind of modular that you see back there. Then we have some more effects here, like Charm Verb is Melda's freeware reverb, which is definitely, if you don't feel like paying for anything and want a really good reverb, that's a excellent place to start. So let's just start with, I don't know, uh, additive. All right, so now we just have an additive synth. If you're super familiar with additive synthesis, there's probably nothing here that's gonna be like really surprising to you. This is our structure. This is our harmonics. Um, we can have different shapes in our harmonics. We could have sine, sine 12, sine 1, 2, 3, sine square, triangle, rectangle, saw. I've never used anything but a sine wave, personally, in additive synthesis. And the idea of using a saw wave mixed in with sine waves in a like 128 harmonic additive patch is just i'm not there yet that's like 40 flash bulb albums in the future i'm not i'm not quite there yet let's uh instead make 32 sine waves and my guess is that it's gonna sound a little bit like a saw wow look at that okay so if we bring the volume down a little bit just incrementally it ideally you would want to do this 
with exact numbers, but, you know, who has time for that? And in fact, I think I'm going to chicken out around 16 because I don't feel like doing this all day. And I do believe like two years ago I made a video where I actually painstakingly made additive stuff out of sine waves. So let's just, you've already learned that from me if you've watched this channel and didn't know about additive already. So this should sound even more like a saw. All right, so now if we mute every other one, we should have a square sounding thing. So that's proof that we have a good additive synthesizer. Okay, but as awesome as additive is, and as much in handy as it will come when you're making a patch, uh, let's keep moving on and looking at other things here. So uh, let's look at the wavetable. The wavetable is absolutely crazy. Uh, right now we only have two. We can actually customize these however we like. And so just for basic wavetableism, and we could add waves as well. We can keep going and adding more and more. Uh, let's go nuts and let's just make like 168 waves or something. Um, you know what? We could actually analyze an audio file. I don't know. I just have like random files that people have sent me. So let's go with this Russian word, whatever that is. Uh, let's analyze it into sure. Well, let's start here. We want it to start kind of loud. We want it to end kind of loud. 64 waves. Analyze. All right, great. So here's our wavetable. Oh, that sounds so gross. I absolutely love it. Okay, so let's modulate this. Down here at the bottom, we have all these envelopes, attacks, randoms, key scales, and LFOs. Let's choose an LFO. And over here, right next to wave, I'm going to click this little box. And this is sort of our little automation or, I guess, modulation box. And here I can just say, hey, I want it to be LFO 1. I got my depth set. We should be good to go. Yep. Now that sounds absolutely nuts. So let's... Uh, Let's slow down the LFO here. And I suppose if we want, we could just keep playing with this until we found something that we liked. We could also synchronize the speed of the LFO and like, let's just choose a uh, saw down or something or square. Yeah, saw down would be fine. Now, if we want to, we could put that through a resonator if we just want to go completely insane. All right, so right next to it, we can just load up a, another synthesizer. Let's just say a FM. I'm going to disable this really fast, and now let's just look at the FM. What do you know? More sine waves. This has eight possible operators, so it's really easy to get completely bonkers with it. So let's set this one, uh, let's set the PWM. Ooh, that sounds gross. Let's set the ratio to like two on this second operator. Third operator, let's set the ratio to three. My camera died. Dead camera, bro. Fourth, let's set the ratio to like 17.592. <laughs> we could also deal with width and synths and things like that, so. Uh, what's even weirder is if we wanted to just go to like 1.1 1 .1 is our ratio. Actually, let's go 1.01 .01 as our ratio and let's level these out a bit more. We could invert this. And that's just going to have a really, really crazy effect on the initial base sine wave. All right, let's hear this whole ensemble. So we can also add effects down here. And we can tell the reverb where our head is. And I mean, I don't mean to do this too. I know that this has already gotten crazy enough. But let's just disable this reverb and let's go over here to the effects tab. And let's just uh, click one. And oh, look, now we have literally the entire library of Melda's things. So that M Turbo reverb that we were just playing with. Yep, here it is in all of its glory. And uh, 
Let's choose one of these insane creative patches, like a glass resonator, and run this right through that. And why the hell not, let's throw a wave folder in there. And while we're at it, let's throw some granular effects in. And now I just want to hear a comb filter over the top of that. Um, let me turn off the granular really fast. Make a big attack on that. A slightly lower attack on that one. This one doesn't need to have as much gain. This one can have tons of gain. And to give you an idea of what this entire patch is doing, uh, I'm going to set the attack to be really high. And I'm going to set the release to be really high. And the decay can stay there. Smoothness, I, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't really matter, does it? In this case, at least. Uh, it's going to be monophonic, um, just, you know, to avoid any confusion. Our generator has a 256-wave wavetable that's using, like, half of those. That's going through a resonator. That's going through a reverb that is doing 2D modeling that is accompanied by an FM using eight different operators. All of that is being piped into the effects, which is a wave folder, a sort of granular synth, well, I guess more of like a granular reverb type thing. That's going into a comb filter. It's technically going into two different comb filters, which harmonize with what everything else is doing. Set these attacks a little bit higher. And last but not least, we have our earth preset on M turbo verb. And let's hear it. I don't know what that sounds like on YouTube, but that was pretty epic to me. But I think one of my favorite parts of this whole uh, experience is just deleting the whole thing and starting over. I don't know why I'm so addicted to that. I love just deleting presets and starting over. One day I need to start a Patreon because that will actually make me save my presets or save my sounds. Maybe I will start a Patreon just for that one reason, just because that way I'll stop deleting everything I do. Not that this was like my magnum opus or anything, but... You know, I, I do have a problem. Here's some ASMR for you. M Sound Factory is really interesting because I really just want to be like, it's the most powerful plugin that I know of. Full stop. The end. What more needs to be said? Well, a lot more needs to be said because I am going to give a little bit of criticism. And it's not criticism. That's anything that's Melda's fault. I would never, ever open up a session like have a feeling in my heart and open up a session and then open M Sound Factory. That just wouldn't happen because I would end up spending the entire day crafting an amazing sound when me as a musician, I just want to hammer something out. But I can't say that for everybody because if I am in a certain music writing mood, I kind of don't even want to go to the computer. I go to the piano or I go to the guitar and then I bring it to the computer later and I start dealing with it. I, I'll even go to the modular because at least that way things are more hands-on. I would go to M Sound Factory to get lost in a sonic world of experimentation, which is kind of what I already did when I was just trying to show you, oh, this is what this plugin does. And I was already like, wow, listen to this. It's so great. That's what this does great. But like I said earlier, this isn't the fault of Melda Instruments. What do you want them to do? Make it look like Serum? Well, you can't because this is an instrument maker inside a box that has a bunch of instruments and then a bunch of presets for those instruments. So I want to do one more preset in M Sound Factory and I want to just like open it up and be like, all right, what does M Sound Factory do best? Well, what do you want to do? That's what it'll do best. It's up to you. It's up to your the amount of time that you want to put into a patch. I guess I'll just look at a string synthesizer. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good, but we'll make it sound better. 
Um, let's add, let's try and make it sound kind of like rings. I love the rings module so much. So for those of you who are into modular, you probably know that rings has either, it's either monophonic or it is polyphonic up to four notes. I don't really see a reason to limit it to four notes or maybe, actually I wanna see if I can, let's try that. Yeah, okay, maximum four voices per note. Of course we can do that. Let's remove the glide entirely and this should be a little bit closer to what we want. Yeah, okay, that's not so bad. And here is our generator. We have widening, just like we do in rings. We could put some all-pass filters on here if we want it to sound more membrane-y, like a drum membrane. Another thing that rings does is it has odd and even. One is in the left channel, one's in the right channel. I guess I'll have to do that with a sample and hold. Of course, I can just search the sample and hold value triggered by a gate. I can then map. The Wait a minute. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm going to spend another five hours just trying to emulate a module that I have literally two feet from me over there. So let's not do that. Let's just make something pretty. I'm sorry that I'm wasting your time here, but I mean, this is, this is the double-edged sword that is this particular instrument or pretty much anything of Melda's. One thing that I'm a little bit curious about is can we just have LFO one drift in slowly? Can we have some attack on it? Uh, looks like we cannot. However, what I can do is I could map this to uh, envelope. Let's just go with envelope five. Wherever that is. There we go. All right. And then envelope five will tell me the amount that this can drift to. And this, I'm kind of doing exactly what I just said I wasn't going to do. Like I'm just getting a little bit too hardcore here. But here we go. This way we add a little bit of like play inside the vibrato. Sounds a little bit more natural, I guess. And the real reason I'm doing this is because I'm getting it all set up for when we run it all through, of course. Reverb. This should definitely have some interesting delay. And I'm just, I guess I'll put it before the reverb. And, you know, I haven't really used Melda's delays all that much, but turbo delay, I'm sure, is just as insane. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's just as insane as turbo reverb. Uh, all right, what do we got? Do we got any tape? I like some tape. There we go, tape. Turn the low down, the mid up, the high up, the wow and flutter down a little bit, and... Sounds pretty glorious to me. I'm not even closing in on the insane amount of stuff that Melda has. Um, I'm just sort of going through 10% of it. So I've sort of shaped the envelope into a bit more of a pad sound. And by the way, I should note that this has, you could sort of like modify these envelopes to be a little more West Coast feeling, which is nice um, for those who are in a module, you know what I mean? You could sort of adjust the curves rather than just only the levels. All right, let's listen. Sounds really creepy. Dig it. By the way, I have like six different channels of synthesis here, and I'm going to just load a, uh, let's bring it back to like a triangle, maybe even a sign, and bring it down maybe 24 semitones. There we go. I could put it in this lane with this string as well and then everything will run through that same series of channels here and of course you could like split these channels up in a more complicated way but for now I'm just keeping it easy. And so now it sounds obviously way different. I'm only pressing one key, by the way.
All right, let's just go back to the presets really fast. Here's a noise stepper. Um, here's some of the presets within that. So much for downloading a sound library ever again. Yeah, this is more physical modeling. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, GUI sound maker. I'm just going through some of the sound design presets here. I do wonder why it's so easy to make creepy sounds with this. It's just... This is just a bunch of shepherd tones. It's pretty rad. They're actually really good. Cinematic breams. Nice. Obviously, there's tons of, like, normal synth things. Well, when I say normal, I mean really advanced and awesome. I feel like I need to just do, like, a 10-hour stream of just playing with this, but, um, let's... I sounded worried there. I was like, but, um, I want to hear this Monastery Grand. It just sounds, uh, intriguing to me. And it's a huge piano library that works with this. And I, I don't know how this loads samples or anything. I'm just, let's, uh, I guess let's go with all mics and stuff and see what that sounds like. It's not blown by the sound of it. I feel like my mind's gonna be blown when I figure out how it works, but there's gonna be some sort of insane editing thing here, but let's hear it. I know there's more to this. And I know it's all going to happen when I click this edit button right here. So let's, no, let's not do that. Let's not click the edit button. Okay, so just so you know, if you have Meldus plugins and you don't feel like going that far into the rabbit hole, there's like Empower Synth, which of course is a insane rabbit hole. And it's a very, very featured soft synth, but it's not quite as insane of a rabbit hole as M Sound Factory. A lot of these have multi-band versions and non-multi-band versions, and I've just added the multi-band versions. But um, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of fucking plugins. <laughs> Honestly, if my viewers are really into this and want to see me play around with Melda things more, then let me know and maybe I'll do a stream or something, or I, I do want to cover their looper in a separate video as well, because they do have a new looper. Let me open that up really fast. It's M Super Looper, I believe it's called. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, they have this crazy multi-channel looper. And guess what? Of course, within the settings of each track, you can add any effect that Melda has. Just playing my guitar into it, I was able to pretty much immediately make one of the most insane drones I've ever heard. So Again, this is the world of Melda. Um, back to you, Ben. So yeah, that's just sort of the tip of a pinky toe into the rabbit hole that is Melda Productions. All right, so how much does all this cost? Well, first of all, I do believe that every single one of Melda's products has a free, fully functional trial. Right now, they have an Eternal Madness discount sale going on, and you could get the M-Comb filter for $29. You could get the M-Convolution multiband for $29. That's dirt cheap for what you're getting. We opened up that M Super Looper plugin, which is what I said is probably the most powerful computer looping plugin I've ever seen due to the effect sends on it, and that costs 46 bucks on the introductory discount. That's actually really cheap. Did I just say introductory? The retail prices are obviously a bit higher. M Sound Factory is on sale right now for $235. For what you're getting, that's a steal. M Turbo Reverb costs a bit more. Again, for what you're getting, it's an absolute steal. If you compare it to something like the Waves Bundle, it's a fraction of the price, and it's in a completely different ballpark in terms of being way more powerful than the Waves Bundle or Waves Plugins. Sorry, Waves. Their general pricing is for software licenses with free upgrades. However, while I'm not a huge fan of subscription model software pricing, they do offer that as well to where you could get pretty much everything that they have 
for a monthly fee. If I were hired as a marketing consultant, one thing that I would tell a lot of music software companies is that they should have a subscription model, but it's just payments and then you own the software after you've paid retail for it. But Melda's stuff is priced quite reasonably and if the Rona outbreak got you laid off from the pencil factory and you wanna save a couple bucks, then they do have sales all the time. Just keep your eyes open. You could get something for a pretty good discount. And by the way, if you downloaded the software demos or bought the software and you wanna learn more, Melda has really, really good, vast documentation. And there's also a channel called Chandler Guitar. And this guy covers a whole lot of stuff in really good detail. So check out that channel as well for more information on these resources in the meantime. As always, if you learned anything or you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you wanna support this channel, I have some links below to my Bandcamp and socials. I have like 25 hours of music that you could download and listen to if you're interested in that type of thing. I don't know why you would watch this channel and then be interested in music. Those two things are like, all right, I'm starting to lose my voice, bye.